everyone. Welcome to Laser Tech Tuesdays at 2. I'm Jay Cottrell, and I'm the Global Marketing Communications Manager here. Every Tuesday around 2 p.m. Mountain Time, we go live and discuss solutions in traffic safety or professional measurement. You can join us on your coffee break. We are live for about 15 minutes. And we love hearing what you think, so please comment on the video, and we'll answer your comments either in real time or as a subject of another Facebook Live. And today we're going to be talking about traffic safety and mapping. I have Kevin Fremont and Rich Maxwell on today. So thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having us. Yes. So uh, I will start with you, Kevin. Can you just explain briefly who you are and how long you've been with LaserTech? Sure. Fremont, uh, I've been with LTI for approaching 25 years this spring. I'm the regional sales manager for the Mid Atlantic. So I cover anywhere from Maine to Maryland. And you are, um, you said you were Kevin's first customer. Can you tell me about that? And tell yeah. me about yourself as well. Well, basically I'll tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm a trainer for LTI, Fracture Place Trainer. Mapping uh, and measuring classes here in New Jersey and quartering states. And also we have a program where we do uh, speed enforcement classes here in New Jersey for the LIDAR. I'm a retired police officer, retired about 10 years ago from uh, Central Jersey Police Department. Um, and yeah, 25 years ago, I was Kevin's first customer when he came on to the cop. We bought a map kit from him. That's when the impulse first came out. Wow. Yeah. All right. Talk about mapping then, since that's what you do. You help train people to do that. Um, can you tell me why it's important for police to map? Well, when, when you do a major crash investigation, such as a fatal crash, uh, to reconstruct it, you need exact measurements of where the car's travel path of travel was, where they ended up, where they collided into each other. So the easiest way to do that is to map the scene. Uh, the old-fashioned way was using tape measures, and then when lasers and total stations came out, we started transversing over to them to be more accurate. Okay, so you measured tape measures and lasers. What other solutions do uh, departments use? Uh, there's uh, drones are another option to do photogrammetry with, um, total stations, which are what surveyors use, um, and then there's also the 3D scanners, but you know, the further you go, those the higher in price you go to them, and uh, uh, operation with them becomes more tedious for them, too. Uh, so, Kevin, what kind of mapping systems do we offer? What solutions do we have? Well, currently we're offering um, a two-man system being a two-person system, being a laser, acts like a total station, it's a laser mapping system. One person shooting, one person walking the scene with a prism pole, just like a surveyor. We're also exploring going back to our roots into a true one-person mapping system. So we've got some new products online. We're just doing some preliminary testing now to see if we can go back to a true one-person crash mapping system. Um, again, it's you know we're, we're pretty low on the price that are price point for in terms of mapping products and availability. Like Rich said, uh, there's drones, there's scanners, there's robotic total stations. It's like a big toolbox a lot of times. And LTI's got a, you know, built a great product, super accurate, super easy to use, and it's easy on the budget, so it's, it's quite popular. Okay, so when they're using our lasers for mapping, do they have to write down all of the measurements that they're taking? Like, how does that work? What does the process look like? No, I mean, the great part about the LTI system at this point is we're running on an Android tablet. We can also run on an iOS tablet, or we can run basically run your mapping data collector on your, on your cell phone. So uh, we've become very versatile in terms of data collectors. Uh, as Rich said, Rich does a lot of our speed training in New Jersey, not only does our mapping training. So some of the instruments are, are interchangeable. It's, we can a department will buy a laser for mapping, but that laser also could be used for speed. So again, in terms of today with the budgetary issues, LTA has got a product that kind of does both, you know, does two things at once. So it, 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 knock, it checks a lot of boxes. That's really nice. So um, one of the solutions we have is what runs on the tablet. It's called Quick Map 3D. Can you tell me what some of those uh, key features are? Like what do people enjoy the best about that? I can hand that over to Rich since Rich is a reconstructionist, a former police officer, a trainer, and a reconstructionist. So uh, yeah, and he, Rich does all my training. I'm just the I'm the rep. So right. Rich, so what's better. great about that? what's great about the, the the Quick Map 3D? It's been a product that you've had for a long time, and it's evolved into what it is now. 
software. It's a super user-friendly device. It works. Uh, it's wirelessly on the tablet or your Android phone or, or iPhone, um, and you can actually fire the laser directly from the tablet. Um, and you don't have to worry about taking any notes because each point you measure, you can put notes with it. Um, you can develop a pick list where if you re use repetitive notes, you can just, instead of typing them over and over again, you can just pick from that list and go on and move on. So you can very quickly map a scene with it. Um, and I'll even go back to when we first bought the, as Kevin said, going back to the true one-man stage, one-man operation, which is what the first LTI laser setup was. We could map a system in a half an hour, 45 minutes stops, and we were done mapping a system. Um, and the same thing with the, the presence of day system. You can go out, do, you pick the points you want to measure, which is the biggest thing about this compared to the automatic systems. Instead of measuring thousands and hundreds of thousands of points, you control what you want to measure. You can measure 10 points, you measure 20 points, you measure 100 points, whatever you want. You pick the evidence points, you measure them, you map them, and then you download them to a CAD program and draw them when you get back. Um, and actually, the Quick Map 3D kind of acts like a CAD program as it is, because you can visualize your scene as you're doing it. It's on a large enough screen on the tablet where you can actually see your scene evolve as you go along and develop it while your evidence points come upon it. It really works well with it. So um, when you're mapping a scene and maybe you didn't measure something right or you made a mistake, is there anything they can do about that? Or do uh, they have to wait until they get back in the office? You, you, can, you, you can right away tell if you made a mistake because you'll see the point appear on the screen. If it doesn't look like where it belongs, something's not right. And you can erase that point and shoot it over again. Um, there's many ways to correct the problem. Just leave the point there if you don't want to and reshoot it. And you can explain, if you can articulate, well, why is that point number nine, like way out in left field? You can explain why to bounce off of a reflective sign. Uh, I was pointing the wrong way when I shot it. Um, if you're not comfortable with the reshooting or erasing points, because it is evidentiary value when you're dealing with this stuff. Uh, and the other nice thing about it, it works day and night. It doesn't matter because you can adjust the brightness on the screen and you can see it day or nighttime cold, warm, rain, snow, it doesn't matter, this stuff works in every kind of weather. Okay. So, um, as you're training and as you're selling guns, um, what do you find is the most popular combination that departments like? I, I, I think, you know, it's, 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 it really depends on the department and the use. So, like we said, we could, we could, we could provide a department with a laser that does speed and mapping, which is great. Um, it could be used by a traffic unit every day for speed enforcement. A crash occurs, they take the unit, they hook it up to the kit, and they can map. Or if uh, you're a dedicated traffic homicide unit, you can just buy a laser that just does mapping. Uh, they're in the same platform, they operate the same software. Uh, the, the only difference really is whether the laser does, does mapping or does mapping at speed. It's just, it's, and that's a personal preference on the department side. So do you only map large scenes with this, or is there a way to map small scenes? Turn that one back to Rush. You can you can do in, indoor scenes if you want to. It's uh, it just depends upon what you want to measure, how how much, how many points, how many evidence points, and where the area is. Um, if you really want to get into a smaller indoor scene, there's the True Point 300 kit, which is designed for smaller scenes, indoor accuracy down to a millimeter um, uh, accuracy. And uh, I did a webinar oh, back in July, I think it was we did the webinar on doing crush measurements utilizing it. That's how accurate it is to do a crush profile in a vehicle with it. And and you can make that supplement a part of your kit. Like as, as Kevin said, there's toolbox. If you put all these tools in your toolbox, whether it be drones or all the stuff, and you have a well-rounded use of everything, you can attack any type of a problem that comes to you. Uh, because everybody's like to hear, oh, one product solves everything. That's not true because everything has its limitations no matter what you're dealing with. But having the right tools in the box definitely helps get any job yes, done. Yes, yes. And, yeah. and with, with the, what's nice about the, the True Point 300 kit, it's like, an, it's a, because everything's modular, which is I really liked back when, when back 25 years ago when I first saw the setups, it's, it's modular because you can use a laser for doing speed enforcement and then you can turn around and do a crash scene with it. And you don't have to worry about having two pieces of equipment. But now, as for example, as, as LTI progressed with our technology, uh, we were able to add the angle encoder to the existing laser we had. We didn't have to buy a brand new laser because everything is, is interchangeable and you can you can modular put this stuff together as it goes along. Or on the reverse side, something breaks or something goes bad, you're only replacing one part or you're losing one part for a little while, you still have the rest of it to work with. It's not like those old TV sets that had the built-in VCR. Once the VCR breaks, it's gone. 
Sure. Right. So um, you've used our equipment for a long time. What would be your favorite, Rich? Well, if you go back to the old systems, the, the impulse leaves, I like that. But the new systems, it can't be the true speed SX bay because it does speed enforcement. It does mapping, and it's wireless. There's no cables to plug in to, to communicate with a tablet. So I think of everything that, if you had to pick one individual item, I like that because it's so versatile. You can use it for everything. Plus, it's waterproof, though. I mean, you don't have to worry about the rain and everything else, though. Right. Yeah, a rugged unit is definitely preferable than something that's going to break when you look at it. Um, what are some frequently asked questions that you have to deal with when you're doing training? Oh, there's a lot of... Uh, I don't want to use, I don't know if anxiety is the right word to use, but there's a lot of nervousness because, especially for someone who's never used the system before, they're intimidated by it. They're intimidated by the fact that you have to set this all up. You're walking out of the prison hole. They look like surveyors. Or so but once they get used to it and realize the setup is very minimal, uh, you, you can be up and setting a, you can set up a scene and like carry to go in less than five minutes sometimes. Once you get proficient at it, you can get up and going on it. And once you start mapping, you just go away with it, just shoot a lot of points. And it, it depends how quick you can walk with the prison pole to shoot the points is what it gets down to if you get that proficient at it. Right. So once they've had, you, you do hands-on training, of course. So yes. once they've got a chance to play around with it a little bit, then uh, the confidence factor is. Yeah, they, they get very confident. They realize that, you know, it's they're not intimidated by it, that it's very easy to work. It's very user-friendly. Um, and, you know, if, if you can work a cell phone, you can work the tablet, you can do the, the because everything's so user-friendly, it's really user-friendly. It's, it's not so difficult that you get into a menu, you get lost, it's very easy to, to overcome any problems you might deal with. So that anxiety that they first have when they come into the class, not sure, not knowing how it's going to turn out, is pretty much gone by the afternoon of the first day. It's pretty good. Makes your job easier then, doesn't it, to teach? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And you did say that you covered crush measurement. We did have a webinar on that uh, last summer. So um, any frequently asked questions that you get for crush? Like, um, when would you measure it? Do you want to measure crush every time? Well, if you could, it would be good to do the profile every time. It's not just for crush. It's also for the profile of the vehicle. When you, when you want to put them together at maximum engagement, when you're doing your reconstruction of the crash, if you have an exact detail.